Let, let me ask you, do you think, because this is something we hear a lot, the left is more likely to consume its own or attack its own side? I think so, yeah. Why? <sighs> Okay, everybody, my original plan was to come to Los Angeles and then shoot up to San Francisco for the wildfire story. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of people that need their stories highlighted. However, it's being announced now that the governor of Florida has declared a state of emergency because Richard Spencer is on his way. So I'm going to be diverting to Florida for this, God, just depressing and, and, and absurd story. But today we are joined by Lacey Green. Oh, hi. Do you want me to look at you? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. So, I've known Lacey for a while, and we avoided doing any videos during the whole Lacey Red Pill thing. Yes. And now we're finally going to do a video together. Yes. And we're going to talk about tribalism, because I think you are probably an expert when it comes to tribalism. I don't know about expert. I feel like my experience is very intense, however, yeah. well, then being caught in the middle of all this shit. Then, then, then you start. Take it away. Yeah. What's your well, experience? I mean, the whole, the whole drama was basically... I mean, the way that I understand it now, all that stuff that happened, is just a big tribal feud. Because, look, when I look back at all that stuff that happened, and you were, like, there with me. I think you were even there, like, right after I recorded, or, you, like, I, I, I rehearsed house. the you were script to it. you. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you were there, like, through it all. And, like, on this side of it, I honestly think, like, people way overreacted to what I said. I don't feel like I said anything crazy or at odds with what I've always said, but everyone freaked out. And I think a big part of it is because it, people perceived it as this sort of threat to a tribe, you know? Yeah. A threat in, associate, like threat by association, you know, guilt by association, threat by, you know, saying maybe this other tribe has some legitimacy, a political tribe, right? Um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's just, like if you aren't always criticizing the the other, yeah. then you must support them or you're legit, legitimizing them in some right. way. Right, right. Yeah, so... You, and you're not allowed to criticize your own either. Right, right, right. Because that's a sign of weakness. You know, it shows that you aren't loyal over something. And I think that happens on, to be clear, like both sides. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that like the right people, the more right-leaning people that I hang out with willingly criticize the right either. No, it's, it's, I see it as the same. But you yeah. know, what was fascinating to me is that in the video you made, so just for the people who are watching, Lacey, you, it was called uh, Taking the Red Pill or something. Something like that. Something like that. And it wasn't specifically about you not, it was, it was, you actually opened the video by saying you are an intersectional feminist who believes these things. Yeah. And what was fascinating to me is that people on the right were cheering for you having done this video, trying to open, like create a dialogue and bridge yeah, built some bridges. Even though you were like, I'm I'm the other, like I'm the enemy, yeah. and, and the people on the right were like, yeah, you go, and the people on the left, on the social justice side, had the exact re like opposite. That's true, response. although to be fair, there was also a lot of skepticism and um, I think undue sort of blame or, I don't know, just weird like conspiracies about it <laughs> yeah. from the right. Like, I was trying to pull a fast one or something, and it's like, when have I ever pulled a fast one? Like, I, I see myself as, I've always been pretty honest and upfront with the internet. It's, it's funny because I remember a while ago, when I was talking to a bunch of, like, I, I would actually say far-right personalities. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't like using the word far-right, but I was like, I find Lacey to be very reasonable. I was like, Lacey has, I've never had a discussion with her where it's come to a point where she's refused to Google search. You know, it's like, if we've ever disagreed, we Google search it and go, oh, I guess I was right or I guess people I was wrong. People refuse to Google search? Yeah, no, like, people Why? would be like, I, I don't know. They, <laughs> so they can fight. And so I was telling people, I'm like, I wouldn't be friends with somebody who just berated me and attacked me and refused to actually look up the facts. Right. But there is this assumption that simply because you have done feminist videos at one point, your entire body of work is feminism, your, mm -hmm. your, your sex ad stuff is totally negated. Right. Yeah. And when that is the majority of what I do... And what I've always done is sex ed. But, you know, the way that I see it, you can't, ha you can't create a good sex ed platform without many of the things that feminism and social justice stand for. Because a lot of the social problems that we have in our society right now 
are related to sexuality in some way or another, or are related to sex, you know, your body, <laughs> what sex you are. Um, and that is where, you know, I've always sort of tried to tie in those issues with sex ed, but I do feel like people have, um, they sort of create this idea of what a feminist is in their head. And there's all of these like cringe compilations and Big you know red. these I these ideas about what a feminist is and what a feminist does and what a feminist says and stands for and beliefs. And I think that, you know, some of this stuff is based on what I've actually said, some of the like criticism or uh, support even. But I also feel like some of the criticism and support that I got was based on a stereotype of what people assume I believe or think um, because I do use the F word, you know? Yeah. And there's sort of this unwillingness to see nuance. There, you just gotta put people in these black and white categories and these people believe this and, and that's what the, all of the calling everyone Nazis thing is, right? Like I, people who literally cannot comprehend beyond their bubble of uh, what someone who sees things differently than them believes. Anyone who sees something differently must be a Nazi, right? Must yeah. be a white supremacist. Or and it's the same sort of thing. Anybody who, yeah, anybody who stands for certain SJW things or whatever feminist things must be X, Y, Z. So people know that I don't like Donald Trump, but I don't go out of my way to constantly like attack or like virtue signal, I guess, as some people describe it. I'm just like very calmly like, well, there's a lot of reasons I don't like him, but I'm not here to attack someone else. I'm here to, you know, more so to like try and pull people together and, yeah. and, and, and do those kind of things. But, I mean, it's not your place either in, like, at least in the, sh the place that you shaped for yourself with the journalist stuff and reporting, you know? Yeah, I think when it comes to politics, um, my opinion on what policy is good for the country, I, that, I, that has nothing to do with what is the actually good for the country, you know? Yeah, the reporting. Yeah. But the funny thing is, people on the right don't call me an SJW until I actually argue with them over specific things. Then all of a sudden they're like, you're a liberal SJW. Right, right. right. And on the left, it's the same thing. You're a, you're a Nazi yeah. alt-right. If you're not with us, you're against us. If you're yeah. not in my tribe, you are out of my tribe, and therefore you are a terrible person who believes X, Y, Z. Can't there be three tribes? Like, I mean, there two, could probably be a two. lot more than that. Yeah. But well, I feel like the way that American politics is set up is such that we really do lend ourselves to two tribes and sort of force people into one of two categories. Are you a liberal or are you conservative? And really, I think these days, are you a leftist or are you a right winger? And yeah. I think those terms are actually different. Like they refer to sort of the, the fringes of these groups, you know? Um, and I think that's been exacerbated by the internet. The most extreme voices are elevated, polarization, polarizing ideas and tweets and videos get shared the most. And then big brands assume that this is mainstream and will capitulate to these ridiculous voices. You think so? Yeah. Like what brands? Uh, off the top of my head, you, you put me on the spot. I don't, <laughs> no, but when when you have these Twitter campaigns of like you know this this group or this thing is sexist, then the, the brand immediately responds. Right. When the average person doesn't care, the average person right. wants to watch Game of Thrones. Kind of like that whole dub being racist thing. Right, just right. Happened it's like every, people are trying to find that controversy. And then, yeah. You know, trying. It does sort of feel like the outrage is manufactured, and that was another, I think, element of my experience was manufactured outrage. Like people just wanted something to be angry about, and it's so funny. Like some of my good friends, right? People or people. Some of them are people I've met online. Some are people I've met in real life. Were like, I heard crazy shit about what you had said and done on the internet, and I was terrified to watch your videos. I was terrified I was gonna watch like some right wing, just like crazy shit. And then I watched it, and I, I could not believe how over hyped and over how much outrage what this simple thing that you had said generated. Yeah. That hey, maybe we should talk to people who have different opinions. And maybe there's validity to arguments and trying to see the other side of things, you know? Well, <laughs> let, let me ask you, do you think, because it's something we hear a lot, the left is more likely to consume its own or attack its own side? I think so, yeah. Why? <sighs> Why? Right, that's the big question. Why? Well, I don't know. Like, when I was first starting, in the first few videos that I had made that had garnered some popularity in more political circles, like more leftist circles, 
that was when I first started getting these pretty vicious attacks from the left. And it was really confusing to me, you know. Wait, wait that was a long time ago. That was this before. was a long time ago. This was when I was like 20. Wow. Yeah, and I'm about to be 28, so, you know, sitting with it for eight years. And I asked, you know, my ex-boyfriend's parents at the time, they were pretty, you know, liberal, liberally types. And they said, look, all throughout history, we have watched as leftist movements eat their own and attack each other. And really, it only serves to undermine those causes because it makes them less united. And being united is really important to actually getting things done. Why people eat their own, I don't know. Like, I think there's probably something to be said about the importance of appearing righteous, of Virtue appearing, signaling. Yeah, of appearing virtuous and the overgrowth of egos, you know, people who really have lost sight of what we're trying to do, what we're trying to organize around, um, and are really only thinking about themselves. And this has been exacerbated by an internet economy where you can actually build a career off of this because it creates all these incentives to be absolutely insane. And people get away with it, and they will continue to get away with it. And I worry about what that means for movements and what that means for me. I don't really care about the tribes as much. I want to find places to compromise, to move toward equality. And I think that does take compromise sometimes. You know, you can't just, I don't know, threaten to bash people's heads in if they don't do it or feel is the exact same way you do. Or, but that's or, where we're at now. Or people who say things like, oh, Republicans are lost. There's no point even talking to them, that kind of mentality. Yeah, and that's the other thing that bothers me too. And I feel like some of these kids are just like privileged little brats who grew up in these echo chambers and these liberal bubbles in these cities who have always been around people who agree with them, who see the things the same way they do. And I come from like a more rural area. Everyone in my area is like very conservative. My family's Mormon. The other half of my family is like, you know, not Islamic. They are anti-Islam, but you know, grew up in an Islamic, came up in an Islamic country. You have to learn to navigate that. You know, you have to learn how to have productive conversations with people who see things differently. You can't just expect to say, well, this is the only, you know, this is the only way to see it. And if you don't, you are a racist, sexist, homophobic, whatever. Nazi. And I will not talk to you anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Or Nazi. And well, to well, me, that's, well, it's well, also well. so insulting because it takes the power out of those words. It takes the power out of those problems because now you're accusing everyone to every degree of problematicness or ism, right? Every degree is the same. And that's not true. And you can't just put everyone in this category of bad people who aren't worth talking to or understanding. You know, right. how, how do you really expect to make change? And that's the thing. That's the thing that really gets to me about all these YouTube activists and everything. I don't think they actually do want to make change. You know, I don't think they actually are committed to understand how much work it really takes, how much personal sacrifice, how hard it is to really have the conversations that need to happen in order to really make change. They just want to scream into their echo chamber and be validated. It's all ego. I agree. I, I, I've told this story before. I went to, I was invited to an event in London. It was like Creators for Change or something. Mm -hmm. And a friend of mine re specifically requested, if you invite me, you have to bring Tim Pool because they were a fan of my journalism because, you know, I'm viewed as, you know, at least attempting to be balanced in some, to some, some degree. The whole event was just them ragging on white people, white people and Trump supporters. At, at a YouTube thing? It was a YouTube event called like Creators for Change or something. Where, oh no, I'm sorry, it was Summit for Social Change. I oh, I was invited to that. I think, right. yeah, I think the, I had talked to you shortly before you went to that. They're, they're sitting there going, we want to end hate. Yeah. And then I'm like, I, I'm totally down for this. And then what do they do? The first comedian starts making fun of Trump supporters and white people. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, look, I get it, you know? Yeah. You're, you're angry with the policies and the things they believe. Yeah. But you realize it is anger. insulting someone and attacking them will not make things better. Right. You're just, you're just making more hate. Yeah, you're like, so I got, I got really mad. I'm like, how can I sit here? You know, the, the reason I got triggered, I would say, is that it was an event to end hate that was breeding hate. And to mm -hmm. me, that's like a, a paradox, inefficient. Yeah. So I just like, I love Breeding hate against Trumpsters and white people, you think? Yeah. No, that's do what you they think were doing. That, okay, fair enough. My question though is, do you think that 
like a comedian. This is something I hear a lot. Like, is it com- is comedy? Does it have the power to breed hate? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I you know I think comedy gets more of a, a special pass, right? In that we're supposed to understand that some of these things aren't meant to be taken seriously. Right. But in this instance, it opened with a comedian and then moved to legitimate discussions where they would right. show pictures of fat Trump supporters and mock them. Oh. Right. 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 So. For me, this, this is why I've always been like, I don't want to be on That's crazy to me. I don't want to be on anybody's team. I've if, never experienced that in a YouTube space myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, YouTube's always been, I would say, fairly left-leaning. Um, and I think that's a good thing. You know, I think that the, the idea of inclusion and wanting to make sure that everybody is included on the platform is a good and noble goal. I don't think making fun of people or censoring people is a good and noble goal. And I, I don't, I don't know. Beside that, I don't really see YouTube doing that deliberately. They, I think they accidentally, like, do you remember the LGBT stuff? Like there was the yeah. safe filter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like I think a lot of the stuff that YouTube does is just pure clunkiness, you know, and trying to figure things out and maybe doing it in an awkward Never attribute way. to malice that which is easily explained by incompetence. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's so relevant today. Like, you know. in so many things online, people just go zero to 100. It's like, well, maybe, you know, outrage isn't what's necessary here. Maybe well, just ask some clarifying questions. Literally what I said in my video two days ago was that almost all of these channels, these mission-driven storytelling platforms, are looking for the bad guy. Mm-hmm. And sometimes there isn't. Sometimes it's just we disagree. But if we don't at least compromise, there's no solution for either of us. Yeah. Yeah, and I do think compromise is the key, and good communication is the key. And you know, people who think this is inconsistent, I say go watch any of my videos about relationships and how you form relationships and how you build community, because those are the foundation. If we can't communicate and we can't compromise to get things done, then we're not going to go anywhere. Yeah. You know, gridlock. All right. So fascinating conversation. What do you think is going to happen in the future? This is like the last, this, this is how I end things, right? What's, what's next? Uh, is what's it going to get worse? Is it going to get better? You know, you're a prominent voice in the space. What's your opinion? I don't know. I do think that things will get worse. It's a bummer, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to believe that about people. Because I am the type of person who will be, you know, have so many reasons to be jaded and still want to trust and still want to believe that people are good. But the reason why I think it will get worse is because I think that some of these problems are baked into the platforms that we use to communicate. I think a lot of the polarization and stuff is being incentivized online. I mean, YouTube drama stuff, you know, sort of... I don't know. It just, does really well. It does really well. And just all of these like riots and things at these talks and just, you know, all of this stuff, just this inflammatory stuff. People are, you know, they're lining their pocketbooks. It gets clicks. It gets views. Making me out to be a hate monger and a turf. It gets clicks. It gets views. People get outraged. And maybe it's because people just want to feel something, you know, they're, they feel powerless. They feel you know, upset. And I feel very upset about what's going on in our country right now. I wish that those people would look inward at how they're managing their grief or upset and figure out ways to actually do something productive rather than lashing out at each other. Well, here's hoping. Here's hoping. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out, Lacey. Of course, Tim. Yeah. Anytime. So thank you all so much for hanging out and watching. You can follow me on Twitter at TimCast. If you want to support my work, go to TimCast.com forward slash donate. Give whatever you'd like, give nothing at all. My videos are always free and available every single day at 4 p.m. And stay tuned for breaking news and live streams from around the world. I am currently on my way to Gainesville, Florida because the governor has declared a state of emergency simply because Richard Spencer wants to speak at a university. There's a huge protest planned and I guess we will see what happens. So stay tuned and I'll see you tomorrow at 4.